This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Good evening, I'm Mark Mullins, and first up at 7, let's get your Storm Team 6 forecast. After a steamy day in central Indiana, we are tracking the possibility of spot storms. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory keeping an eye on things tonight. Kevin? And steamy is a good word for definitely with the humidity. Our heat index values were well above our 90 degree actual high temperature. The record set back just in 2013 at 95 degrees. Temperature right now 86 in Indianapolis. As you go north of Indy, that's where we've had some pop-up showers and thunder storms. We'll take a look at the radar here in a second. Warmest in Muncie at 88 degrees. Nothing fundamentally changes until Friday. That will be our transition day to eventually more comfortable temperatures. Heat index values what it feels like all in the lower 90s north. 91 in uh, Terre Haute and 90 in Indy. As we look at the radar, not finding any showers or thunderstorms here. Look at all of the activity to the north. The reason it's fired up there, a cold front sits there. There's the transition to the cooler air to the north, the warm heat humid air to the south. That transition or battle zone will be here during the day Friday. For the rest of the evening, 78, warm and muggy at 10 o'clock tonight. RTV6 is working for you, looking into a string of vehicle thefts on the southwest side that are costing residents and business owners. Concerned viewers reached out to RTV6 with video, which they say shows the same group is behind several thefts. This was recorded Thursday night in Decatur Township. You can see three people who appear to be teenagers stealing from vehicles. Then two come back and take off in a truck. The owner of that truck had a GPS tracking system and was able to get it back with the help of police. But others who have had had their vehicles taken on the southwest side. Hope whoever is doing this is caught and soon. I can say kids are kids, you know, yeah, you hope they, they find the right way. Learn that, you know, what they're doing is wrong mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, I, I mean, you want them to get caught for what's happening. Um, I, I really just don't know. I'm kind of at a loss for words there. The thieves seen on video are also accused of stealing from unlocked vehicles, a gun, expensive sunglasses, even a pair of keys belonging to another vehicle that was stolen. If you know anything, you're asked to contact police. RTV6 is also working to help a Shelby County couple solve a mystery. They're trying to figure out who removed their roof. RTV6 was first to tell you about this bizarre situation last night at 11. The Giles family made the discovery when they came home from a camp trip. Didn't know or understand why what happened. Um, no one was around to give us an explanation and we haven't seen or heard from anyone to explain or what happened. The couple believes a work crew might have started taking their roof off then realized they had the wrong home. Today they tried searching for any roofing crews in the area with no luck though. Tonight they're waiting on their insurance company to figure out what to do next. They hope to get the roof fixed in time for possible rain on Friday. Each year on this day, one Indianapolis man dedicates 12 hours of his day to those killed in the 9-11 attacks by a simple wave of the American flag. This year, James Clark continued his 18-year tradition as he waved the U.S. flag over the bridge on West 56th Street at the I-465 overpass. Many drivers honked in recognition. Clark encourages those who would also like to make a difference to donate to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We are learning today the Indianapolis 9-11 Memorial will soon be known as the Indiana 9-11 Memorial. One of the biggest reasons is the memorial will soon be home to a piece of the Pentagon Stone, which was Indiana Limestone. The memorial was originally established to honor the lives of those who died on September 11th, including nine Hoosiers, four of whom were killed at the Pentagon. Leaders say the change in name from, well, excuse me, the change in name to Indiana from Indianapolis is meant to show that all of Indiana remembers that day and honors those who died. And with a piece of the World Trade Center steel from ground zero on display, first responders and Homeland Security took part in honoring those lost in a ceremony at the Indianapolis airport this morning. The piece of steel from the towers was put on display in the Civic Plaza for the day. Leaders say it's a reminder of the unity amongst those who came together that day. September 11th is a day etched into the memories of people here in the U.S., but also those living elsewhere. A town in Canada made headlines after it was called into action following the terrorist attacks 18 years ago. Coy Rangel shows us how the town reacted when people arrived who needed their help. Gander, Newfoundland, a tiny town on an island in Canada. Six traffic lights in Gander. 
and five of them are on one street. Claude Elliott has lived here for more than 40 years. He served as mayor for more than half of them before he retired two years ago. Oh, the people are generous. Uh, the people are, uh, you know, they, uh, they love helping people. After the terror attacks on September 11th, the FAA shut down American airspace for the first time in history. 38 commercial planes with nearly 7,000 people on board were diverted to this small rural town of Gander, its own population of less than 10,000 people. What do we do with 7,000 people? We only got 500 hotel rooms. Welcome to unexpected uh visit to Canada. Passenger Kevin Turf, who lived in Texas, took this video from his seat on the plane. We're in Gan Gander, like a Gander, Gander. Weary passengers watched as day turned into night. Some ended up being stuck on their plane for more than 12 hours. But what the passengers could not see is the urgent effort by the people of Gander working to make sure the tired travelers would feel welcome once they got off the plane. The people of Gander opened up churches, schools, and even the beds in their own homes. When there was 38 planes here, I knew it was a big impact. Well, our population almost doubled overnight. Beulah Cooper jumped in the kitchen and made trays of sandwiches for the plain people, as the locals called them. Her work did not stop in the kitchen. She also brought people over to sleep and shower. You just had to put yourself in their shoes. So then that, that makes your heart even bigger. That big heart of Beulah's sank when she found out two of her guests lived in New York. Dennis and Hannah O'Rourke watched the unimaginable unfold back home. Dennis used to like to hear a few jokes, trying to take their mind off what was going on. But the jokes could not calm their agonizing fear. The O'Rourke's son, Kevin, was a New York firefighter. It was emotional because she was a mother. And her son was a fireman, and he was missing. He was off that day. He wasn't on duty that day, but she knew in her heart that he was there. Beulah looked after Dennis and Hannah for five days before the couple was able to fly home. When they left, they still had not heard from Kevin. Then Hannah called from the States. She said, Beulah, he's gone. She said they found his body under the stairwell. Kevin had rushed to the World Trade Center and gave his life to save others. That was hard. It was hard. Beulah still keeps in touch with Hannah and the people she helped out. So do many others in Gander 18 years later. On the first day, we had 7,000 strangers. On the third day, we had 7,000 friends. And on the fifth day, we lost 7,000 family members. That's how close we became to the people that was here. In Gander, Newfoundland, Canada, I'm Corey Rangel reporting. As the number of vaping-related deaths continues to grow nationwide, Indiana is also discovering more possible cases. What one Midwestern school district is now doing to try to stop the problem. Kevin. Thunderstorm chances will increase as we go through the next 48 hours. We'll get into the timing and what it means for temperatures briefly coming up. Working for you. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Well, President Trump announced today a plan to take flavored e-cigarette products off the market. The CDC says those flavors have caused a rise in teen vaping. A sixth death has been linked to vaping-related illnesses, this time in Kansas. This comes as Indiana investigates even more cases of unusual lung conditions. The State Department of Health tells RTV6 they are now investigating 34 cases of this illness. That number has climbed by four since Friday when Indiana reported its first vape-related death. We still have eight confirmed cases out of all of those. Other states that have seen similar vaping-linked deaths include California, Illinois, Minnesota, and Oregon. Meanwhile, today a school district in Wichita, Kansas is planning on taking vape product companies to court. Kansas is that state that reported its first death tied to vaping today. The Board of Education at Goddard Public Schools in Wichita says these companies are responsible for creating a daily disruption in classrooms. Goddard Public Schools is suing several companies, but is targeting Juul for marketing its products 
specifically to teens. The school district says it is their responsibility as educators to protect their students. Ball State researchers are worried about you getting enough rest. They say more people are starting to feel tired. Ball State University found nearly a third of working people in the U.S. say they're getting less sleep now than they did eight years ago. First responders, military personnel, and healthcare workers are among those sleeping the least. Increased stress and job insecurity along with technology are leading to the problems. Over-the-counter meds may actually be making it worse. Uh, you never know how to use them well. It's not an off and on thing. And frequently they're misused, abused. Uh, even in primary care, uh, if you just walk into a doctor's clinic, uh, many of them would not know how to diagnose insomnia uh, and also treat it. Ball State experts say doctors should look at all the factors that might impact sleep in a holistic way and simply not prescribe medication. Time now for your Storm Team 6 forecast. Meteorologist Kevin Gregory here is tracking some chances for spotty storms after a really warm day we had. We need the thunderstorms to transition, however briefly, to cooler temperatures for the weekend. Most of the thunderstorm activity tonight up in Michigan, it will slowly drop our way over the next couple of days. Just want to show you temperatures tomorrow close to 90 again. We had our 20th 90 degree day of 2019 today. Coolest temperature Saturday doesn't last long. Temperatures will come right back up and looking beyond the seven day forecast at what we call 10 to 14 day outlook take us to the 24th of September. We continue to average uh, above the high temperature of uh, 78 to 74 in that range in there. So temperatures well into the 80s on most occasions. And that's certainly the case for tomorrow. 88, Friday, 85, a little cooler. The cold front coming through, generating thunderstorms. 81 on Saturday. That will come with a noticeable drop in the humidity. Thunderstorm chances tomorrow. Most likely northern half of the state, really the northern third. On Friday, a little more widespread potential for thunderstorms along the cold front, all of central Indiana will have a chance at those thunderstorms. 86 right now, 4 degrees off our high temperature today in Indy, 86 in Terre Haute and in Lafayette. Other temperatures, as you can see, all above the average high of 79. Tonight, we cool off, but only down to 70 degrees. Temperatures will be in the upper 60s in some outlying areas. Tomorrow, after about 3 o'clock is when we'll see these pop-up thunderstorms, especially in the northern portion of the state. Wind out of the southwest. Start at 1 o'clock with our TrueCast model. There are some thunderstorms by 4 up toward Rensselaer, Valparaiso, dropping into the northern half of the viewing area as we get to the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. Frankfurt, uh, Delphi, Kokomo, Peru, just north of Indy, and then those fade away as the temperatures cool off. High temperatures from north to south running at least 10 degrees above average. No surprise there, no change until we get to the weekend. The chance for stronger storms Friday is there, a marginal or low risk for severe storms, starting at about 1 or 2 until we get to the evening hours. I'd say 2 to about 7 p.m. is kind of prime time for the thunderstorms along the cold front. Noticeably cooler, less humid Saturday. Then on Sunday, temperature already bounces back up to 87. We'll keep it in the mid to upper 80s. Monday and Tuesday, still in the low 80s on Wednesday. Everyone's going to enjoy uh, shorts weather, getting back into the pool for the weekend. It's got to be a private pool, right? Yeah, we right. closed all the public ones. <laughs> reopen, reopen, reopen That'll for the be weekend, extreme. right? All right, thanks, Kevin, for that. Hey, coming up in our nightly hiring Hoosiers report, they say life is 10% of what happens and 90% of how you react. So for these future workers of Indiana, the key to success could be the confidence they learn in this program. Plus, how to move ahead of your job without going out of your way to impress your boss. The key to climb at work ahead in hiring Hoosiers, only on RTV6. Then filet sandwich meal, only at Zaxby's. You might remember how intimidating it can be to apply for your first job. RTV 6's Hiring Hoosiers is working to bring you open jobs, available resources, and opportunities to expand your skill set. And right now, students at Brownsburg High School are feeling confident. It's thanks to this extraordinary program. Our Aaron Lish explores how students with special needs are getting the opportunity to find future success in the workforce. I love it. I like working here. Inside the restaurant Dawson's 2, you'll find Tyler Burr in the kitchen. I'm learning to learn a lot of skills here. 
As a life skills and functional skills student at Brownsburg High, he's part of the Collaborators for Success program, where students with disabilities are connected with local businesses. Our goal at Brownsburg High School is to make their last day of high school look as close as possible to their first day of life after high school. Tyler, along with 24 other students, learn soft skills like communication and hard skills like cleaning. Clean the dishes and um, stuff in the silverware. That Tyler knows he'll need in the workforce. I feel real appreciated they let me work here during the school days. 20 different businesses participate in the program and employees at Dawson's too say kids like Tyler are awesome. They're kind, they're gentle, they're nice, they're great to work with. During their internships, they can get references from their supervisors for their portfolios. Everybody wants to be needed, wanted, uh, find a purpose, all of us do. And uh, they're no different than anybody else that's out there. Not only is Tyler getting work experience, but also becoming independent and confident. With all the job coach that taught me all the skills I need to learn throughout the years. And that's how I know I'm going to be good when I get a job in the community. Our Aaron Lish with that report. Students can work at multiple internships, so they have a strong resume to show employers. They can also stay at the high school until they're 22 if they need more time. We've got this story on the RTV6 app and HiringHoosiers.com. Continuing to talk classroom to career, the college year may be just starting, but it's nearly time to consider financial aid for next year. The application window opens on October 1st. Experts say applying early allows you better access to money as well as quicker responses from schools. Sally May found only 25% of families fill out the application in the first month. More than half waited until after January. Well, no one wants to feel stuck at your job, and usually when you want to move up, it could be your boss that you're trying to impress. But as our Annie Taylor found out, non-traditional tactics may get you further. Everybody at some point in their career, whether they're happy or not, they feel that they're in a rut. Melanie Colsey has been working and recruiting for more than 10 years, and like most of us, has had the itch to move up in her career. I've been personally lucky enough, though, to forge solid relationships throughout my career that I think have really helped me get to where I am today. Expert Mala Saragi says there are new ways to get ahead. Society has changed, and she says we all have to adapt. I think traditionally people feel like they need to suck up to their boss. But now, network. But not the way you might be thinking. You gotta network internally. People think networking is like, they, it's taboo. But uh, I mean, networking is just talking to people. It's just literally having heart-to-heart -heart conversations with people and being yourself. She's talking about with your coworkers. It could be as simple as saying hi when you walk into the office or bringing in donuts. Taking them to lunch, um, doing fun stuff after work, doing happy hours, bringing in breakfast burritos. When it comes to those gatherings with coworkers outside work, Melanie is not a huge fan. I feel like that time after work is my time, and I do go to some things, but I don't go to everything. But Mala says those are important. I feel like a good balance is at least managing to go to at least 60, 70% of the um, company events. If you think your boss doesn't notice, they do. How um, we're collaborating with the team and how we're mentoring each other is really important for the next step in your career. Things pay off. Just work hard, stay focused. I'm Annie Taylor reporting. Still ahead tonight, a new report puts Indiana at the head of the pack when it comes to this kind of education. Why the nation considers Indiana a leader in this kind of skill set. Fitting at the Good Feet store. Right now on RTV6, Hiring Hoosiers works to bring you stories of jobs, skills, and connections. And tonight, we're seeing new findings showing women are working and making more money. U.S. Census data shows working women are earning more money than they did before the 2008 financial crisis and are surpassing the gains for men. Women working full-time saw more than 5% gains in pay over the last decade. That's the good news. But the Women's Law Center is concerned momentum may not keep up. Yesterday's data show that uh, tax credits and uh, food stamps and programs like that are helping people out of poverty, yet we're seeing some attacks on those programs. 
Census data also shows that fewer women income driven households are at poverty level, but the gender pay gap is still about the same with women earning about 82% of what men make. Indiana has poured a lot of effort into making science and technology education top notch, and now it's getting national recognition for it. A new report highlights Indiana as a national leader in computer science education. The 2019 State of Computer Science Education praises Indiana for being one of just three states to significantly increase computer science education funding over the past year. The report also focuses on Indiana's alignment of existing K through eight computer science standards to high school standards as well. Temperatures still in the 80s. Well, in the 80s, we're at 86 right now, and you know how this works. You send your dog's picture in to me at Kevin.Gregory. Hey, Roxy. WRTV6, and I'll take your dog for a walk. Roxy, sitting on the front porch, that's the posture I have at the end of the day. <laughs> Not necessarily motivated to take a walk, but it will be a dry evening. 77 at 11 o'clock tonight. Next two days, chance for thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. More likely, we'll see some widespread thunderstorms Friday. Roxy, watching all the kids run by. There you go. That does it for us at 7. We're back with you tonight at 11. Have a good evening.